we have the ability to terminate life on this planet and we have the nuclear capacity to do so and also through we, we, through our missions we have tremendous say in how this world is going the planet might be you know ending in, in a habitable way pretty in, within the next hundred years yeah. so this is very very bothersome we control our future we control the destiny of this planet and they said go to let us build us a city and a town whose top may reach into heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Well, we are just moments away from the historic launch of NASA's Orion spacecraft. We've been waiting. And high winds are forcing several delays yesterday before it was scrubbed altogether. Phil Keating is live on the Space Coast right now, Cape Canaveral. Well, all systems go, Phil. All systems are go. The winds are actually stronger than they were yesterday, They're coming in from the northeast and beyond the northeast there. You can see on the launch pad, that is the Orion capsule atop that big Delta IV heavy rocket full of propellant, ready to blast off in what will be a four and a half hour experimental test flight just to make sure that the Orion capsule in the future is safe for human astronauts, no astronauts on this flight. Once it gets off the ground, it's going to orbit the Earth twice. Uh, a lot of sensors to test everything, performance of the capsule, how it handles in the radiation of the Van Allen belts, and of course it's going to go 3,600 miles above the Earth further than any spacecraft has gone since the Apollo missions in the 1970s. And then it's going to splash down in the Pacific after re-entering at 20,000 miles an hour. This is the future to get astronauts to Mars in the 2030s. It's absolutely the most important launch since the first shuttle launch. Let's listen. All right. Status check. Go Delta. Go Orion. Brainboard. 25. Lock in. T minus 20 seconds. 15. Rofe ignition. 10. The igniters have been lit. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff at dawn, the dawn of Orion and a new era of American space exploration. Still looking 
good. Coming up on two minutes. Two minutes into the flight. Good engine control on the first stage. Port and starboard boosters still at good uh, chamber pressures in the full power mode and the good core chamber pressure in the partial thrust mode at 2 minutes 22 seconds in. How gorgeous was that? Just the way it's supposed to happen. You hold your breath as it takes off, and now it's going around the Earth a couple of times. Uh, this unmanned mission, uh, which is to test a spacecraft, is all about going to Mars. When could we possibly go to Mars? Well, no time soon. They say perhaps as early as 2021. But And they would use that rocket, and they would use that capsule. That's right. It's set to take its first orbit, one of two around the earth this is historic as you said steve your heart just kind of held its place as we watched that. that hopefully lots of kids were watching this is exciting and and, and that never gets old we watch it again it's so majestic and inspiring and exciting and we just saw two minutes of american exceptionalism at its very best and then that shot we saw and we'll take it again of seeing the earth below as that rocket ascends into the heavens that is incredible. Gives you a little glimpse of our place wow. in this world. Makes me feel really good on a Friday. Sure it does. does indeed. All right. Meantime, bloggers claim they spotted a UFO flying near the International Space Station. Small object captured on a live camera feed flying behind the astronauts. Some skeptics dismissing it as an illusion caused by light. You be the judge. And just moments ago, NASA launched an Orion space capsule that may someday take astronauts to Mars. Nighters have been lit. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff indeed, and look at that. Incredible. American Space Exploration. Wow. Beautiful thing to watch. Chip Reed is at the Kennedy Space Center where this important mission is underway after a one day delay. Chip, good morning. Yes, it is a beautiful thing. It was a thunderous launch. I could feel it in the platform we're standing on from about seven miles away. A Delta IV rocket launched an unmanned Orion space capsule that will do a four and a half hour test flight reaching an altitude of 3,600 miles. It will re-enter Earth's atmosphere at 20,000 miles an hour, generating temperatures of 4,000 degrees, and that will test the heat shield to make sure it will keep astronauts safe. Now, NASA calls this a major step toward sending astronauts toward Mars, but it will be a very long time before that happens. The first manned flight of the Orion space capsule is not scheduled to happen for another seven years, and those flights to Mars aren't supposed to happen until the 2030s, which means some of the astronauts who will be going to Mars are in preschool today. Charlie? <laughs> hey, Chip, thanks. We have the ability to terminate life on this planet, and we have the nuclear capacity to do so. And also through, we, we, through our missions, we have tremendous say in how this world is going. The planet might be you know, ending in, in a habitable way pretty in, within the next hundred years. Yeah. So this is very, very bothersome. We control our future. We control the destiny of this planet. Imagine going on a two-year trip. You have to pack all the food you're going to need, all the water, all the oxygen, and make sure everything works for that entire time. David Klaus is a former shuttle launch controller at Kennedy Space Center, and now an aerospace professor at CU Boulder, home to a number of space-related experiments. To simulate the, the vacuum of outer space. Designed to eventually help humans get to Mars. We generally think of it in, in order, essentially, of staying alive and healthy and happy. Staying alive comes down to engineering, making your life systems on board function properly and that there is enough food for the voyage. One idea is to pre-deploy pods to Mars, self-contained small farms with robotic farmers, which could provide an additional source of food when the Orion crew finally arrives. It sounds like science fiction, but it's now under development. And that's what they're recreating, but they're doing this with the help of robotic probes that would go in and monitor soil moisture content, for example. Uh, be able to plant the seeds, be able to harvest the strawberries or whatever they're growing. All that's to stay alive, but staying healthy and happy is up to the humans on board. In particular, your bones and muscles start to atrophy, waste away, use it or lose it kicks in. And then staying happy 
is essentially the psychological elements of all this. And psychology will be critical for the crew members who could eventually travel to Mars on Orion, on or after the year 2031, meaning that future crew is among us right now. Some student somewhere in the United States in a classroom today will be the first human on Mars. They're in the first of two orbits right now. In the next four hours they'll be laying the first brick on the road to Mars. Now what's really significant about this, if they can bring the spacecraft back to the atmosphere at 20,000 miles an hour in about four hours and it withstands all of this, it'll be ready to head into space, make its first trip around the moon in 2018. So what this all means is very simply this is the project for the survival of the human race, the human species. Uh, generations of the future will have to be colonizing Mars, colonizing the moon and other places in the solar system if this species is going to survive because Earth will not support us forever. The first uh, thing that could happen to get us off earlier is a sort of disease or Ebola comes to mind that we would have to depart Earth in order to survive. Even if we get to stay here, as long as scientists say we may be able to stay here before we go nova again with the Earth and the sun dies, our only star die, then, uh, you know, everything will be set in place for our survival, Joe. All right, Jay. That is... Uh a beautiful sight this morning and uh, some, uh, some heavy talk about uh, what, what this may be the first brick on the road to Mars and beyond. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll, we'll love talking to you to get a follow up on Monday. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. In the next four hours, they'll be laying the first brick on the road to Mars. First brick on the road to Mars. Now, what's really significant about this, if they can bring the spacecraft back to the atmosphere at 20,000 miles an hour in about four hours, and it withstands all of this, it'll be ready to head into space, make its first trip around the moon in 2018. 2018. So, what this all means is very simply, this is the project for the survival of the human race, the human species. This is the project for the survival of the human race, the human species. Uh, generations of the future will have to be colonizing Mars, colonizing the moon, colonizing Mars, colonizing the moon, and other places in the solar system if this species is going to survive because Earth will not support us forever. The first uh, thing that could happen to get us off earlier is a sort of disease or Ebo Ebola comes to mind. Ebo Ebola comes to mind that we would have to depart Earth in order to survive. Even if we get to stay here, as long as scientists say we may be able to stay here before we go nova again with the Earth and the, the sun dies, our only star die, then, uh, you know, everything will be set in place for our survival, Joe. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell the sides of the pit. Take a look. That is the Orion spacecraft coming down into the Pacific, just a few hundred feet off the ground now. This, uh, these pictures are coming from a NASA drone that was dispatched. That uh, capsule was just launched this morning, as you might know, uh, from Cape Canaveral. Got up into space, was doing 20,000 miles an hour, and now, as a test, those three uh, shoots are slowing it down to 20 miles an hour. Phil Keating was there for the launch. He can help us through the splashdown. Phil? 
Uh, this is a tremendous first-of-its-kind video from a NASA unmanned drone aircraft that's been flying out 600 miles southwest of San Diego over the Pacific for several hours now. And the science involved here, the Orion has performed perfectly, flawlessly, and it is about to splash down out in the Pacific Ocean. The drone capturing the live shot of the parachutes, deploying those huge orange parachutes that helped slow the Orion down from the 20,000 miles an hour it was doing as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. Huge test for the heat shield, the largest ever designed for a spacecraft, 16 feet plus in diameter, sustaining 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, this would be about 80 percent of what it would sustain. Uh, it would be 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit if it was returning back to Earth from the moon. So that's a big test for the heat shield. This is an unmanned test flight, of course. It launched just minutes after sunrise this morning from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Spectacular, loud, a lot of fire. About 20,000 spectators thrilled all around Cape Canaveral who would all come out to watch this historic first test flight of NASA's spacecraft of the future. That is the Orion. This is unmanned. There's going to be another unmanned test flight before uh, we actually put astronauts in there. That should happen, the astronaut trip in 2021. And then the plan for NASA is to get the Orion out to an asteroid that another spacecraft will capture. It will actually capture it, bring it into uh, within the moon's orbit, and then the astronauts will go do a spacewalk onto that asteroid. And then, of course, the ultimate plan here, why there is such enormous excitement at NASA and all of its subsidiaries all across the country today, is that this is the spacecraft that, according to plan and intention, will eventually in the 2030s take astronauts all the way to Mars, making them the first human beings ever to set foot on the red planet. This is an historic day here, an outstanding test flight, the maiden voyage for the Orion. Uh, the capsule built by Lockheed Martin, the Delta IV rocket uh, that it launched on, the largest in the rocket arsenal, blasting it off. That was built by United Launch Alliance. NASA involved Marshall Space Center in uh, Alabama, Stennis outside of uh, New Orleans in Mississippi. Uh, just a whole collective congratulations going out amongst themselves today as the Orion now splashing down. There's a Navy ship out there, a specially designed Navy ship, and a couple of boats will go out to the spacecraft as it floats on the ocean. The waves out there are roughly four to five feet, so that's really great. Uh, anything bigger than 11 feet, and it really would have been a tricky recovery operation. So in about several hours, they'll tow it back to the ship, put it underneath the ship, inside a special hangar that'll fill up with water and then bring it back to San Diego over the weekend. Looks John. like a success. Phil Keating, Cape Canaveral, thanks.